Now it's five years since the Dominic Strauss-Kahn scandal unleashed much soul-searching within the country over the treatment of women, not only in politics but also in the workplace. American journalist and author Adria J. Simino has lived here in Paris for 10 years and her latest book of fiction is about sexual harassment in the world of high finance entitled The Creep Show and she joins me today in the studio. Adria, thanks for being with us. Um, now, with this Denis Bopin scandal, there's a feeling of deja vu about it, isn't it? There really is. It seems we keep hearing the same story over and over again, whether it be in politics or in the corporate world. And every time there's this feeling as if, how could this have happened? It's such a surprise. And yet, it's the same story over and over again. Um, the same sort of patterns that we're seeing among the victims and among the perpetrators or supposed perpetrators. Um, it just seems to be a story that never ends. We think that finally one of these episodes is over and it almost as if, it's almost as if we look at it as an isolated event, as if, oh, it's just the DSK thing, but you know, everything else is fine when really it isn't. So has the country changed post DSK? I don't really think so. I think it was really viewed almost as if this is just, this is an isolated event, this is a DSK thing, but really this doesn't happen all the time. Um, and yet there is this underlying, this pattern of what is really going on. And just the whole idea of when do you say it's sexual harassment? When do you say it's discrimination? When is it considered normal behavior? So why is it not changing as fast as it should be? I think a lot of it has to do with general attitudes uh, towards sexuality and, and just the interaction between people here. Um, for instance, uh, there's a proximity, in, referring to the workplace, there's more of a proximity in the workplace um, between colleagues than there would be in an Anglophone country. For instance, it's it's normal to faire la bise, to give the kiss on both cheeks um, and have that sort of physical contact. So, for instance, if someone came up to you and did that, it wouldn't be considered harassment. Um, so you have to ask yourself, when do we draw the line? Also, people here are more comfortable with saying, hey, that dress looks great on you. Um, you look pretty with your hair that way. That's not harassment here in France. So what is? That's the question. Where do you draw that line? And I think it's, it's a very hard question to answer. And I think that might be one of the reasons why we're having problems finding solutions. Adria, more and more women are entering the workplace. You've got more and more young women mm -hmm. entering the workplace, which is even more important because their attitudes are different. Are right, they? right. Um, I think that younger women are w more willing to speak out and say, hey, this isn't right, uh, this isn't normal. Sometimes in, in the early stages, it's difficult. For instance, if you're right out of college, you really want to keep this job, you really want to have this opportunity. Um, so are you going to really say something? If, if something is happening to you, or are you going to say, maybe I why, should... Why do women struggle so much with coming out and going public about uh, sexual harassment and, and, and abuse? I think part of it is that women don't want to be seen as a victim. You say to yourself, if I say that this happened to me, I will be considered a victim. I don't want to look like a whiner. Um, I can tough it out. I can, I can just tell this person, hey, don't do that, and it'll go away and it'll be fine. But the problem is, even if the person no longer does that to you, there will be another victim down the line. Um, so really, it is everyone's responsibility, whether it's sexual harassment, whether it's discrimination of any kind, to say, wait a minute, stop, this isn't normal. But it's not peculiar in France for women to do that, is it? No, no. But what makes it different in France by contrast to the Anglo-Saxon world? I think in France, uh, it still is, there's, there still are those views um, on sexuality, or the views on human contact that are a little bit different. In the United States, for instance, um, there isn't that close contact all the time, so it's easier to tell what's right, what's wrong, like this doesn't feel so normal that my boss said this or did that, um, whereas here in France, you say to yourself, oh gosh, this is part of our culture to maybe faire la bise, to give the kisses on the cheek. So um, if someone says something else to me that's maybe complimenting me on my dress, is that wrong? Is not is it not wrong? It's and personally, as an American, did you struggle with that when you first moved here? 
I did. I did at first. It seemed when I would see things, not in every workplace, in my own particular workplace, there wasn't the kiss on the cheek, but I'd seen it before when I was doing an internship here. I saw it. It was a daily thing. And I've seen it in other friends' workplaces where people will do it daily. Um, and at first, it just seems kind of, it's it's kind of funny. And it never seemed to me like harassment, but it was just, um, it was just kind of interesting and different and get, it was something to get used to, to see where the lines are drawn.